Hello and welcome to episode 58. 58. I wrote down 78 <laughs> and yeah, it's been downhill since then. Welcome to episode 58 of the Fiber and Dice podcast. I am your host, Rebecca. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Engineer's Falcon. This is my husband, Charles. Hello. Uh, you can find me as CS Guiden, um, Instagram, Ravelry, Twitter, Board Game Geek. Board Game Geek. All over. Yes, if you want to stalk, he records Board Game Geek for our whole family. So if you yeah. want to stalk our... Say that in the name of me. Uh, it's not cool here. It's summer here. Um, you can find my shop on Etsy. That is Blue Bonnet Fibers. My handsman is up in the shop. In fact, I've got new things for the shop. I'll show you in just a minute. And you can find show notes sometimes on bluebonnetfibers.com. Also on bluebonnetfibers.com, you can find the... Uh, Grab it before I spin it page, and that is the fiber that's in my stash. If you would like to get it at a discounted rate by pre-ordering it, you can do that. Mm -hmm. So you are welcome to go over there. And if you do that, the best ways to contact me really about anything are PM on Ravelry or um, Etsy. PM me on Etsy. So Blue Bonnet Fibers. That's where you find me on Etsy. It is recital day here dance recital for mm. the Geekly Girl. And we got to go to dress rehearsal last night and it was fabulous. She is, she's a very gifted dancer. I know that I'm biased because I'm mom, <laughs> but I think that she did just a gorgeous, gorgeous job last night. Ballet and tap tonight. So we are in between getting everything ready for that, getting her makeup on and my family getting here. They're coming to us instead of us going to them this weekend. It's pretty cool. That doesn't happen too often. So it's kind of crazy. Bizarre. So it has been crazy since we were here. Good things, lots of good things. Mm -hmm. So, oh, if you would not mind leaving Instagram reviews and stars, not Instagram, iTunes. iTunes. I'm not even going to go back and edit it. I love you guys, but I'm not even <laughs> going to edit because this has to be up in five hours and it takes me forever to do that. Since last we spoke, we have done things. When did we last speak? Here we are. Uh, back there, yeah. Yes, we spoke here. I finished knitted things that I have finished. I finished the uh, baby Kirk Cardi. It is the baby sophisticate Cardi. Charles's very best friend and one of my dear friends. Uh, they were just friends first. They met in seventh grade. Yes. He and his wife are having a baby, and his name is James Tiberius. And so I thought he needed a James T. Kirk cardigan. So I knit him this adorable, ugly little thing. <laughs> I love it so much and they loved it and they have plans to meet William Shatner when he is still little so and he's also named for our other best friend James not just for right but I still thought that he needed this is very fitting for yeah for him and for his middle name is not really Tiberius that's no. what I call him but that's <laughs> not really his name it's um, James Anthony but yes but yeah my friend Stephen is a huge Star Trek fan yes so I had a lot of fun making that. It was fun to go by. As it turns out, they don't make this color in baby yarn. Shocking, yeah, I know, right? it's really hard to find. So. Uh, but that was fun. Um, other knitted things I have finished. I finished the Knit Circus socks. I am so excited. They are awesome. Look at those. Fish Lips Kiss Heel, Vanilla Socks, they go up mid-calf, quite a ways up mid-calf, uh, one by one, two by two rib, and this toe thing that I make. So I need to I need to look up what the toe is actually called because I have no idea. Mm. I love them. I love that they are uh, opposites, that they, that they reverse each other. And I love that I have three more balls of Knit Circus to make as other socks for other people. So I'm thinking maybe for my birthday in November, I will get me some Knit Circus yarn to knit for my own self. Mm -hmm. Have selfish knitting in November. <laughs> um, I think that's all the finished objects I have as far as knitting goes. Yes. Mountain of Concord things for spinning. I have the dark periwinkle. This is going into the shop. They are going to be, I think, $48 per skein. These are from the same dye lot and the same spin lot. So I spun them 
to match. And as it turns out, they are the exact same weight and the exact same length. I about fainted. I was like, that is crazy that they came out that even. Um, so if you have a larger project you would like to do with hand spun, there will be 267. They're both 200, about 267 yards within a, within a foot. So uh, purples, blues, a little bit of greens, some areas of almost a goldeny brown, but that plied in real pretty. So barber pole, it's a, it's a pretty subtle barber pole. It's not real. I mean, there are a few sections that are a little bolder, but for the most part, it's just a subtle, gorgeous periwinkle, periwinkle sky. It's called Periwinkle Sky Dark because I also have this same colorway dyed on a light-based fiber. This is um, on a uh, variegated BFL, a crew in brown. So, crew, 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 crew. West Texas. I never know how anything <laughs> is supposed to be said. So, I think that's the only spinning thing I have done. Mm -hmm. Mountain of Conquered yeah, Things there. book. Uh -huh. Okay, this is the most bittersweet read I've done in a long time. I finished The Girl Who Raised Fairyland all the way home by Kat Valente. And this was book five. Book one is the girl who circumnavigated fairyland in the ship of her own making. The girl who fell beneath fairyland and led the rebels there. The girl who soared over fairyland and cut the moon in two. And the boy who lost fairyland. Or the, or the other series. I did, I did have to read them off the bat because I can't remember <laughs> which order they go in. I mix two and three up sometimes. So oh. I don't know why, because three was the hardest. And I know three was the hardest. But these, if you want to read these, you will find them in the middle grade section. But I would say they are the some of the hardest books I've ever read. Um, her vocabulary is beautiful. Yeah. The way she writes, her style is just... So her prose is gorgeous. Um, even in this, and I've read some of her fiction... Well. Radiance, that I talked about a couple podcasts ago, yes. was one of hers that she wrote for adults. Um, and this is aimed at the middle grade market, but it definitely is going to... I mean, it pushed and stretched us as far as um, reading and some vocabulary, and then some just kind of a following the, the plot, the structure. Yeah. Um, my 12-year-old has just started the first one, so that was part of she didn't have to wait till she was 12 to read it, but in <laughs> honor of being 12, it was one of the books in her pile. She borrowed my signed copy and told her to guard it with her life. <laughs> <laughs> I really am ready for someone else to finish this because I want mm. to talk to somebody about how it ended. Because it was, I did not have any idea how she was going to wrap up everything. I did not see the ending coming. I thought it was beautiful and sweet and did did the whole series justice. So. And I have to say, as far as easiest to read, I thought four and five were the easiest to read. Now, whether that was oh. because she kind of found her rhythm and so it was a little smoother or because I had read enough of her books that it was natural for me to read, I don't know. But yeah, Four I definitely found to be easier going than, than yes. three was. And this is next on my to read stack after I finish Brandon Sanderson's Reckoner series, which Rebecca also talked about. A couple of shows ago. Yes. Um, I guess I'm going to finish those and then read this. I may make him go buy his own copy. No, I won't. <laughs> so that is everything I have finished this week. What is Climbing the Mountain? Harry Potter Knit and Crochet House Cup starts at 2 our time, I think. Yes. 2 a.m. our time. Tonight. Midnight Pacific. Yes, midnight tomorrow night. Midnight. Midnight tonight, early morning tomorrow. So I didn't want to put a project on the needles right now because what you do for us cup needs to be started and finished in the month that you're turning it in for. So I pulled out a precious whip that I have been wanting to finish and I'm working on it to turn in for detention. This is the Harmonized Cowl by Christine KDLB and it is all tangled up in its own needles. <laughs> I, I know nothing about the yarn. I don't remember anything. So for that, I am very sorry. But it's very pretty. And it's these two sections, um, kind of this stockadette section and then a lacy panel. I'm almost done with that lacy panel, but I have this much yarn left. So I think I may do a few more rows of 
the stockinette section and a few more rows of the lace section. And then there's a, there's like a garter section before you bind off. So I think I'm going to try to use as much of this up as possible. And so I will probably be working on this all afternoon. There's some battlefront planned and probably a trip to Starbucks and then sitting and waiting for them to turn the lights down for the dance recital. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'll get to work on that. And I, so I will hopefully finish that up in May and turn it in for detention. As soon as that is done, or probably even before, I'm going to cast on a cowl for my mom. She picked one out that is very lovely, and she is welcome to go with the one she's already picked out. But I'm hoping to talk her into using it for this one, because I think this yarn would be really pretty in this pattern. Yeah. And it looks like this. I got it for her for Christmas, and I'm knitting it up for Mother's Day, so I've got a week to do this. So I guess I need to get on it. <laughs> um, again, someday I will get better this is the this is the big grand plan for organizing and knowing what I made from what. I am trying to get in the habit of taking pictures of everything as I work with the intention of someday putting it in a Ravelry project. What I'm also hoping to do is before I start the project to take a picture that has the pattern in it and the yarn with the yarn label on it and to put the needles in through the little gauge and take a picture of what the needle size is. And that would be my first picture for the project and then it will be then I can just pull up the project page and say, oh, I use this and this and this. But I have not mastered the project page thing yet on Ravelry. Like, I know how to do it, but I haven't ever gotten in the rhythm of it. So that's one of my goals for the summer. Maybe during break from school between 6th and 7th grade. We will see. What is, I guess this is all kind base of a camp. combination of climbing the mountain and base camp. Yeah. What is in base camp for spinning is frog and carp. This was voted on on Instagram and Facebook. Oh, there's a Blue Bonnet Fibers Facebook page. Go and join it. It's fun over there. Well, it's not fun over there yet, but it will be when mm -hmm. I have more people who will play on there over there with me. So um, I've done this once before as a gradient, and it was gorgeous. But I think this time I might do a fractal barber pole just to see what it does. So if you like this and would like to put your name on it and get it at a discounted rate, PM me on Ravelry or Etsy, and I will put your name on it and put a put a reserve listing up for you. The colors are gorgeous. If you really want it and you don't want it a gradient, and you don't want it in a barber pole, and you want it gradient, and you catch me before I spin it, I will spin it as a gradient for you. But if you don't catch me before I spin it, it will be barber pole this time. It will be a fractal barber pole. I think it's going to be really pretty. Mm -hmm. So I think that is everything that is mountain of conquered things related. You see anything else? I do not. No. Okay. Let's talk about our upcoming knit along. We are going to have a knit along for the peppermint mocha socks by Cece Ullman in her Coffee with Cece book. Um, and I, I, you can buy that pattern separately now on Ravelry. Ravelry as well. I will next week. I will try to put up the actual like. I show you the picture of the socks and stuff, but I've picked my yarn and I picked my sushi yarn from Fat Cat Knits. This was for our uh, spin along, knit along that we did last year with the Sushi Go colorway. Sushi Go game, sushi colorway. And I think I've talked the engineer into letting me do a pair of peppermint milk socks for him out of the quest from the Dungeons and Dragons inspired colorway. Um, I thought that this was one Peppermint mocha, and this kind of has Christmassy colors in it, even though it's sushi and peppermint sushi, no. But, <laughs> but this kind of looks festive to me, has kind of some of those same colors. And the first sushi that I spun from the fiber, Cece bought and made stuff out of. So I thought this would kind of like, <laughs> like full circle with the sushi yarn. So that's what my peppermint mocha socks are going to be made of. That will start June 1st. And I haven't decided if we're going to do a month or six weeks. I will let you know when I know what my schedule looks like closer to that time. How fast I think I would be able to make one and maybe two pairs. Mm -hmm. In amongst all the other pairs I have promised people. Because I promise things faster than I can knit them. Which doesn't really bother me. But I wonder, unless you have pre-ordered something from the shop or need something on a fast deadline, chances are you will get it sometime. And I will enjoy knitting it. But I can't promise you a date. So... And everyone's pretty good about it. So far, no one has complained. I think if people really griped that I didn't get their hand-knit items that I'm doing for free for them fast enough, I would call them not knit-worthy. 
and that would be the last thing they ever bought from me. So that sounds really ugly, but <laughs> I am very busy. Yeah. I only have so many moments to put to crafting, and I love to make things for other people, but not if they're going to be fussy about it. Okay. Um, I don't know what I want to do next. Ducks in a row? Yeah. I think I'm in a ducks in a row. I've showed you guys my planner. My Erin Condren planner. And I am still really enjoying it. And for homeschooling, this past year, because they were there and cute and I love them, I picked up a stack of the cards that you put in a library book. If you remember Back those. When they Back used when they them. used to stamp them. My children did not have any clue what those were because they have never had to fill out a library checkout card. But I have a list problem. And I had the same problem with the bullet list that the bullet journal I loved the list making system in that, but I got overwhelmed with too many things in one place. So this is how I'm making my list. At the beginning of the month, I am making a list. I have like a master list somewhere in the back. I'm not going to dig it out. Of all the ideas I have for projects in my head. At the beginning of the month, I put all those that need to be accomplished this month or worked on this month on the list. Then I copy it right here, what I'm going to work on this week. That's my ideas for working on things this week. And then, so I stay focused, I am using, this has been so fun, I'm using this little card, this little library card, and I put down one project, one book, one or two crafting projects, usually there's a spinning project and a knitting project, and one like household, I put down chore because they're usually chore things. And then I put them down and add the date that I added them. And sometimes, like this James T. Kirk Cardi, popped up because I got the date. The shower was earlier than I thought it was going to be. So it got a star because it trumped everything on the list before it. And as soon as I'm finished with it, I write down the date it was finished. And then I add something new in that category. So my current chore is podcast number 58. So I am really enjoying this because it keeps me focused because I have like, 400 projects I want to work on. And so I'm just having to worry about the one that's on the list. I also like looking and seeing, hey, look, I got all these things done this month. And then at the end of the month, I have been using a little piece of washi tape. Well, I don't think it's going to be that cool. Yeah. And just taping it in, transferring over, drew little arrows just like from my bullet journal for things that went to this month. And then I've got it taped in the back of the month, everything I did that month. And I love it. Um, one, I'm just a sucker for an old-fashioned library book <laughs> checkout card. I just like to use them for all sorts of fun things. But for me, just having one or two projects that I am written down, focusing on, and that I have like a date I started so I can see how long I've been dragging my feet on it, I've really enjoyed that. I've liked... Um, I just, I like that focus because I've got stacks of games and stacks of books and yarn and fiber everywhere. And I'm tempted to just flip from one thing to another and I never finish anything. And I have been finishing things like that with this little, I'm working on this book, this knitting project, this spinning project, this chore. So um, that's my duck in a row. That's how I'm keeping all the projects in order. And then when I need to add a new one, I've got my little list of the most pressing things to add from there. So I don't even know if that made sense, but that's what I'm doing. I guess that brings us to. You say it. That's my cue. Gamerly news. <laughs> I like when he says it. I guess first thing today, April thirtieth, is International Tabletop Day. So hopefully you're enjoying games. And if not, we really are kind of busy today and won't. So we're going to make it up another day. We so are. So you can have Tabletop Day whenever you would like. There are new games coming. In the car from Lubbock. This does not surprise me. I'm so excited. <laughs> we'll tell you all about those. Yeah. But we did, we went to the store last week, picked up a couple of expansions. Um, They're all over the shelf. Rebecca reorganized a bunch of things. It's my favorite um, game, Board Game Tetris. Mm -hmm. I love it. We picked up some and her mother got us, got us a couple, or got us one and her sister one yeah. uh, that we played last week. 
uh, code names, which is a lot of fun. It's like it was really cool. taboo, except a little more gamerly, um, or a little more hobby gamer. Taboo is one of my favorite games yeah. ever. You tread carefully there. Oh yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> a little more gamerly. It's just got a little more to it, I guess. It I, does. Yeah. It does. Um, I enjoy taboo as well. It's, they're all good. Oh, I'm playing taboo with my sister. They never let us <laughs> be on the same team anymore because. No. You know, it's that lifetime of obscure references where, you know, Trojan horse. Mm -hmm. Like, we have this whole, like, all of these random stories that you can never even explain to anyone, you know, just, but we know them. And so, you know, it's sister magic. We got expansions to Dixit and Werewolf because that are, those are uh, baby girls. Baby, she's 12. <laughs> My 12-year-old is not a baby. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those are her favorite games. So we picked up some expansions to those. We picked up, it's right here. Yep. I know you can't see what it is, but it is the, the new D&D &D board game, Temple of Elemental Evil. It's the last game we needed for our... 10 by 10. 10 by 10. 12 by 10. We're still calling it 10 by 10, but there are 12 on the list, which, yeah, it's yep. a lot. That was a lot to commit to this year. What else? Um, oh. Finally. Can I go get the... I know we weren't going to get them, but can I get the one? I'm so excited. Yes. Okay. I'll be right back. Um, we picked up we picked up a small expansion, Dimensions of Madness, and it's a little uh, blister pack, and the most recent, the published expansion for Elder Tor. I am so excited under the Pyramids expansion. I don't think it's going to fit in with the other box. No, there's there's going to have to be some redistributing of pieces. Yeah. <sighs> this one adds an Egypt sideboard. So you've got like the big world map and then you can go to Egypt and have like little adventures there. Um, new investigators for you to play as, new ancient ones for you to battle against, conditions, weapons. It's probably got like 500 cards in it um, of various sizes and, and uh, things. The dark Pharaoh rises back again. I am, I'm really excited. I've been... <laughs> I've been petting this in the store since it very first came out. So I was really glad that it was time to buy it. So an Elder Tour is also one of our... Yeah, it's also one of our 10 by 10s. So it's... We're very excited. Um, i trying to think before we get to that. Is anyone interested in watching us play a game of Elder Tour? If you are, comment and let us know, and maybe we can Periscope a game of that. I keep saying I want to try Periscope, and then I always chicken out because I can't imagine that anyone wants to sit and watch us play board games. Now, all of that to say, I sit and watch people play board games online all the yeah. time, but I don't know. And then I'm kind of nervous because sometimes we house rule stuff, but people house rule stuff online all the time. Yeah. And people get the rules wrong all the time. If you watch us play, just know we probably are not going to get it all right. Yeah. So, disclaimer. I'll put that little disclaimer up at the beginning of everything. We are not going to get this right. <laughs> So, um, I was trying to think what else you got to be really, very popular at the game store. I did. It was um, so fun. So there's this whole group and they, they're always in there playing. They play D and D yeah. all the time and it's awesome. I like to sit and listen. Their, um, dungeon master has been doing this for a long time. And so he's very smooth and cool about it. And he's not afraid to make his players mad, which I'm totally afraid to make my players <laughs> mad. So um, I like to listen to him while I shop because it's interesting to listen to people who do it a lot better. Um, I've had the same experience with Titan's Grave, which is on Geek and Sundry. Will Wheaton is doing a, well, it's done now. They're working on season two, but we're just catching up. But listening to people who have been doing this for a long time play helps me figure out how to tell stories and, you know, elaborate things and make them much more interesting than, oh, look, there's a goblin. What are you going to do? Let's roll the dice. No, I was never that dry, but it's fun to, you know, just kind of get a feel for how people do things. Yeah. But um, we were buying Elder Tour, the expansion one, and they very kindly asked if we have the base game, make sure that we know we need the base game. Yes, we do. And so this guy gives us tons of information on fan-made. Uh, there's like a campaign where you campaigns. can go through, normally for one game, you just go against one ancient one, like the Thuru or somebody, and they made a campaign where you fight him, and you finish that quest, you just roll into the next one. So, and so he was giving us all the details about that. And then I was like, do you know what I'm the most excited about? And he was like, what? And I said, the expansion for Betrayal at House on the Hill. 
And they all the went, what? the what? And I was like, I knew something that the really serious gamers didn't know. Yep. And they were all very excited about that. So yes. I left them discussing that and went to Starbucks. And that won't be out until October. But we will be getting I am that so game. excited. Yes, we will be getting yeah. that in. That game October. is like 14 years old. And this is the first expansion for it. It's kind of so cool. being reinvigorated. October um, is Charles's birthday and our anniversary. So we justify lots of board games and books. Yep. That month, if you remember <laughs> last year, we came home with a stack of books like this one. Yeah. Because, well, and lots of stuff came out the week of his birthday. Like yeah, on crazy. his birthday, um, his birthday was on a Tuesday. And like six of our authors released books or eight. It was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have, oh, right. we've got to talk fast. I'm so sorry. I got rambly about Eldritch War. I do that. <laughs> Game of the Week is awesome. Escape the Room, the adventure mystery at the Stargazer's Man. We have talked in the past about escape rooms. This is an escape room in a box. Yes. And I was skeptical. We picked it up at Barnes & Noble. It was $20. It is for ages 10 and up, three-day players, 90 minutes. It can go anywhere from 60 minutes to two hours, but 90 is about probably what you're going to spend with it. Yeah. Um, like I said, I was a little skeptical, but $20 is what it costs for one of us to play in an escape room. So for $20 for us to all play in an escape room, I figured it was not too big a risk. My mom got it for us. We played with my sister, who we've done all the escape rooms with, and then both of my parents and the Geeklings. So it was a big group of us. Seven. Seven. I will say, this was a lot of fun. So much fun. I highly recommend it. Um, it is puzzle solving and strategic thinking. And that is all I'm going to say about it if you don't want any spoilers at all. If you just want to know that we liked it and we had a really good time and it was well worth the $20. Also know that there are instructions online for, well, they suggest music to listen to. So you can link to music to listen to while you play. There is, there are clues. If you get stumped, you can go in. It will say, have you completed this task? If you have, go to the next one. And when you hit the first task you haven't completed, then you can look through there for a clue. So it's not all spoilery. And there is a section on repacking it to play with someone else. Right. Obviously, we know how to escape the room, but we have friends that we want to watch and see if they can escape the room. So. So it's, Yeah. Now, I'm not going to spoil anything major, but I am going to open the box so you'll have an idea of the components that come with it. And also, there's nothing I'm fixing to show you that's not on the back of the box. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. The theme of this is that there's an astronomer, and he was in a mansion now, kind of on the edge of town. It's set in 1869, I think. Um, it's got kind of a steampunk feel to it. Um, in fact, you go into the mansion, and it talks about all these pipes and machinery. And, you can see um, all the pieces and smoke coming out of the... the yeah. But he has not been seen in a week or two, and so the, uh, not the groundskeeper, but the, not the executor either. Caregiver. Caregiver, yeah. Caregiver contact, has contacted your group to go and investigate the manor and see what's going on. And then you open the box and find... It says the, the, instruction, the book. instruction book. Do not open any of the envelopes. Read section one before your guests arrive. So, this is instructions if you're the host of the game, and... There is an email that you can send to people to invite that them, awesome. like all themed. It was so fun. That popped across, and I was like, oh, that is so cool. And then there is the story card. The first story yeah. card. And you'll find more as you go through, and that kind of helps progress the, the plot along um, and gives you some hints on what to do for your clues. And this is the solution wheel. That was brilliant. This is brilliant. Um, each... Each thing that you have to solve a puzzle for, you are going to find four different colored. Uh, yeah, they're, you'll you'll tell. This is the blue clue. This is the red clue. Um, you need four clues to open the bookcase. Yeah. And its symbol is that one. So when you think you found the four clues, you line those four symbols up with the yes. bookcase thing. And if two bookcases show up inside this part, then you have solved it correctly, and you may do whatever it is you're trying to do. Open, move forward, whatever. So that way you can yeah. you can check yourself. I mean, yeah, like there was one where we thought we'd had it solved, and we only got one symbol in the middle instead of both. Instead of both, so we, we knew we did something and, wrong yeah. and redid it. And all of the 
everything for the actual puzzles is contained in these envelopes. So, and you can tell just by looking at those that there's problem solving and logic problems and thinking things through and stuff. Yeah. Um, they are, oh, bad. No. Uh, yeah, we really enjoyed it. They are working on a second one. Um, Which we will promptly get. Yes. And then there are a couple of other companies that are also doing escape room type experiences in a box. Yeah. Uh, Karen so, backed one on Kickstarter that we're yeah, supposed to get the, it late this year or early next August, year. August, I think. Something. Maybe. I don't know. That one was the werewolf experiment. Um, and there, there's one other one I remember hearing. I don't recall right now what it was. Um, but so that seems to be kind of a growing trend as well. And they're all one-use things. But again, if you already enjoy escape rooms or maybe you think you might want to do an escape room, but you don't want to spend 20 bucks a person, you can spend $20 a group and do this. Get a feel for um, it. Yeah. Um, I would definitely... even think like for teenagers' birthday parties, it would oh, be yeah. a lot of fun. Um it reminded, me, it reminded us of those, uh, the How to Host a Murder Yes, parties. it kind of had that feel to yeah. it. So, which again, were one use. Kind of deals. Kind of themed evening kind of things. Yeah. Um, if you have never done an escape room, like, part of the escape room experience is being dropped in a room and having no clue what to do. <laughs> and just having to figure it out. I will say this one holds your hand a little bit more. Yeah. If you are a complete novice to this kind of thing, it will walk you through getting started very well. It it holds your hand just enough that you get a feel for what you're doing, and then you're left to figure it out. So yeah, the, the start on this was very well. These done. people knew how to design this to make it um, easily accessible and entertaining and and rewarding. Yeah. Um, so this good. gets five stars from me. Yeah. Very I've never given anything stars before. <laughs> <laughs> this gets all the stars for fun, affordable, family friendly. I would say that um, I mean mine are 12 and 13. We actually did this on Wiley's birthday. And both of them were extremely useful in clue finding. Yeah. If you've got um I wouldn't do it with eight adults. I, there's not enough No. Usually you're only working on one puzzle at a time. So trying yeah. to get eight adults around all yeah. that's a little too Four much. engineers at the table, probably not going to have as much fun as, I mean, you guys might, but. Um, but yeah, definitely, we, we had a good mixed group and it was a lot of fun. All smarties in different areas, which. Yeah, came that from, helps a lot on real escape rooms. As well. Yes, um, to have a mix of people who are good problem solvers and people who are good decoders and people who are good at seeing the big picture like what are we trying to figure out i never get the big picture in the escape room like i can usually solve the puzzles that are in front of me but i never kind of really figure out what the big story is until we've solved it. i'm like oh that's what we were trying to do so um this definitely plays to a mix of problem solving styles yeah so uh, that is oh i forgot to ask us anything i'll do it next week okay. i've got to ask us anything questions so go add more because that won't only get us through may so, uh, Ravelry Thread, go and ask us anything. Games, Disney, homeschool, autism, books, video games, board games. Well, video games are pretty much Battlefront and Skyrim. Te uh, Pokken, not Tekken, oh, yeah. Pokken. <laughs> Pokken Tournament, our son is... Splatoon. That's about all we're playing right now. Yeah. In fact, we have not even put my Legos dimensions together for my birthday last year. But there is not enough time in this world for everything we like. To do That's but true. that is okay so i'm going to get this edited while my family will be here in about 30 minutes so lord willing and the creek don't rise we will see you again in may bye, bye.